Oh hey, it's Wes. I just finished lunch, and it's time to talk about the Godox SL152. I've been pretty excited to use this. I've had this in my hands for way too long. <clears throat> really sorry about that. But after using it, I got less excited and kind of slowed things down. To your advantage, that means I have been using this a lot for a couple months now. It has been in and out of my bag, it's been on the road, it's had modifiers and umbrellas, and it's been tossed, it's fallen down. I've got a real long-term review all ready for you now, instead of just having an initial review for the Godox SL152. 150 Mark II. 150 II. I don't know, let's hit it. Starting with the build quality. For the build quality, we're seeing something very familiar here. On the SL152, it's pretty much the exact same body as this light right here. I had to make sure I was using that one. The Godox FV150. That little phrase, same as the FV150, is gonna get real tired by the time we're done filming this video. It is a mostly metal construction, very solid arm, just mounts on a standard light stand. You can adjust the tilt on this. There's an umbrella holder there, which is also metal. Not really a big fan of the detent device. There's no slider, it's just a pin that slides up into your uh, umbrella arm. Not that great. Then on the back, we are plastic again but it is pretty sturdy. You've got a good handle here. Got myself a right angle cable so we can see what we're doing. It does not come with a right angle cable, just so you know. It does come with this uh, cap that you should never leave on when it's turned on. I've seen a few posts of people melting theirs down. The buttons and knobs, as before, feel very high quality. So, all together, this has already stood the test of time for me, and I'm gonna give the build quality a 9 out of 10. Why isn't it a 10? Well, there are still some plastic components, and I'm pretty sure that if I dropped this with a softbox on it backwards, there's a chance that something's gonna break on here. But nothing's broken yet. Let's move on to the feature set. This is still a very similar feature set to the FV150. We have a little tiny remote control with a little tiny screen. Oh. <laughs> Interestingly enough, my main light is on the same channel as this light down here. So you're gonna have to turn this up all the way. And much like other Godox lights, you can change the groups. So I'm switching this to group two. There we go, we're on group B. And change my controller to group B. There we go. Once again, the remote control, it's very slow to operate because as you control, you slide up and it slides up very slowly then when you release, it sends a new signal. So it doesn't scale with your adjustments and that kind of bugs me. And turn it off. Boop. Ah. Apparently that turns off everything. So the remote control scheme on these things is not great. I didn't enjoy this with the FV150. I still don't really enjoy it with the SL2. 152. So this is a 150 watt COB LED, which is great. Why is that great? Well, it has great color accuracy. It is way better than past iterations for color accuracy. The LED itself has a great centralized light with a wonderful spread, so it's great for soft boxes and umbrellas. And you get the built-in Bowens mount, makes it very versatile. And one big advancement on this over the V, the FV150, is that the fan is a little bit quieter. With this fan running here, you probably still can't even hear it because I'm wearing a lapel mic. But the 150, you wouldn't hear it at all. Let's turn this on again. 
I'm going to crank this up to 100%, and we're going to listen to it directly. So that's the fan with your ear pressed right against it. Now let's go to the FV150. Yeah, that doesn't sound all that different. It is quieter, yes. But if you want it even quieter still, you can switch it to fanless mode. So when you press this fan button, it switches it into an entirely different mode, which is kind of weird. I would much rather it just suddenly bump the light down and the display down to say 50% because it's about a half as bright, but instead it enters an entirely new scale. The fanless mode has its own scale from zero to 100%. And then when I switch to fan mode, that's a whole other scale. I wish it was using the same scale so that it was easier to tell what you were getting out of the light for comparison's sake. And what are you getting out of the light? Well, 58,000 lux at one meter, exactly the same as the FV150. And you saw it earlier, you can switch between special effects, lots of blinking lights. If you want to give someone a seizure, sure. Not a big fan of using those, but hey, if you want to cause some lightning in a scene, you can do that. Pretty standard stuff these days though. What are we missing in here? Well, it doesn't have the flash capability of the FV150, but that flash capability wasn't great anyway. It wasn't even close to as bright as a standard on-camera strobe. And the exposure time of the flash was incredibly slow, so it couldn't freeze motion. Not super useful for most people. I know some people that love it though, so I won't write it off completely. So it doesn't have that. That's a little kitschy anyway. It also doesn't have the ability to be battery powered or DMX controlled. To get that, you have to upgrade to their VL line for a little bit more money. So overall, as a video light, as an LED video light, it does have the basic features that everyone wants and uses. It's an eight out of 10. Light quality, again, same as Godox's other recent lights, which is very high quality, 96 CRI. And the great thing about that particular 96 is that it excels in the skin tone red spectrum. So you're gonna look great. The previous generation of lights, even from Godox, even from Aperture, were a little bit weird in the skin tones. These are pretty complete. Now this is going to be a sliding scale. It's going to change over time because every time someone advances the LEDs, gonna get better, but instead of just talking about light quality, let's see what it looks like when you have a light this bright, this versatile, one that doesn't flicker at any level. You can do great stuff, you can make video, you can do slow motion, let's hit it. Right, that is awesome. In case you were wondering, these are locked at daylight. All these are locked at daylight. Can't wait for Godox to come out with a bicolor programmable video LED light. They're still cooking that up. I'm sure it'll be out soon. Light quality again, that's a 10 out of 10. Moving right on to usability. We already talked about that a little bit with the remote control. It's kind of annoying. On the unit itself though, it is dead simple and super easy to use. There's not much else to see here. You got your brightness, you've got your effect scroll wheel here, also your group scroll wheel. There are a lot of different groups you can go through on this. So not only is it the basic Godox groups, but it rolls up into the numbers that you see in the pro line, and you can even change the channel number. This is a very easy to use light. There is nothing complicated going on here. And so there you go. It's an eight out of 10 for usability. One thing, one note for long-term usability. Although this light 
with the lockdown is still pretty solid. You got the rubber gasket here that holds this clamp in place. On my uh, FV 150 that I've been using a lot for a long time, it is starting to get a little bit tired. This rubber is starting to get a little bit worn. So although this works and it's great for continuous adjustment, I still prefer the continuous adjustment in like the 8600 Pro. That's more of a solid clamp down. It's more adjustable. And I feel like it can hold just as much weight. I feel like if they size that up just a little bit, it would be better than this rubber and tooth design. Moving on to value, and that's where things get a little bit complicated for the SL150 too. So this comes in at $340. The 2.9 kilogram light is also the 200 watt version for $440. If we just compare this, boom, to this light right here, the FV150, pretty much identical light, same output. Has a couple more features that you might not use, slightly louder fan. It's $40 less, $300, and the 200 watt version, 450. Wait, the 200 watt version costs more and the 150 costs less. I don't know what's going on here. <clears throat> And then there is the more professional line, the VL series 150 and 200 for 400 and 550 bucks. So those both cost more. It gives you a slightly more modular design. Honestly, I like the all-in-one design more myself because I'm constantly taking these places and setting them up. It's a little bit simpler for me, but to each their own, some people prefer one over the other. So that's weird. The 150 specifically costs more than the FV series. And it's the same light, essentially. So if you're getting the 200 series, yeah, you might as well get the SL200 for a little bit less. But if you're getting the 150, there's really no reason to not get the, one, the FV150 instead, unless you need that quieter fan. If you don't, this isn't really where it's at. Okay, let's break it out to the rest of the field here. We also have the ubiquitous Aperture 120D Mark II just came out, a little bit hard to get right now, but they've completely scrapped the 120D original. And that's a 180 watt light, sits between these two. That's $745. That is a lot more than this. So, while this within the Godox lineup is not the best value, it is still way better value than the Aperture. Is the Aperture gonna do a better job? I don't know. It's a little more solidly constructed, but the light quality probably isn't any better. So overall, this is a seven out of 10. Not the best, but still a good value. What's that give us? That is a 42 out of 50. I guess I could have done that math earlier. Maybe I could have done it in my head. Who knows? That's a decent score, but this is a complicated decision to make on a product. Honestly, I can't go either way on this. I suspect that the price on this will eventually drop below the FV150, or Godox will actually completely discontinue the FV line because it was not that well received. They were expecting that secondary flash function to really be a big hit, but as we found in the testing, it's not that useful. And so there you have it. Do you need one of these? Do you need one of those? Do you have any thoughts on this? Since it's been out for a little bit now, let me know down in the comments below. I'm always hanging out down there. If you want to buy any of these lights, I've got links in the description. I would love you to lose, use, I would love for you to use my affiliate links because they help support this channel and feed my family and my fat cats. Sorry that they're not in this video. They appear to be hibernating today because winter is coming. So until next time, go take some photos and make some videos.